is about to close the book on one of its legendary heroes. Jeannie Most reports, can it be true? Superman will die November 18th at the hands of a villain named Doomsday? Superman died in edition 75. The ink and paper format that gave him life 54 years ago did away with him Wednesday. Superman died Wednesday. East Greg Agnew reports on a world without the first superhero. When DC Comics killed off the Man of Steel and about with an underworld villain. 30 years ago, Superman died. This was obviously a big deal and it changed comics forever. But how did this come about? And why, among a now sea of other Death of Superhero comics, does the death of Superman stand out? Let's talk about that. Back in the 90s, once a year, there was a Superman summit where all the writers, artists, and editors that worked on the four Superman titles would meet to plan Superman stories for the next year. Now at this time, Superman had been declining. He was still very popular, but he had lost a bit of shine. You see, Superman The Quest for Peace came out several years earlier in 1987 and was not received well by fans or critics, but a movie that both crowds did enjoy was Tim Burton's Batman. Fresh on everyone's minds, a darker, more mysterious hero, people loved it and started to forget about the Big Blue Boy Scout. The success of Burton's Batman, combined with the darker comics of the 80s and 90s, did not paint a good picture for Superman. How would he keep up with these newer, darker heroes? A lot of folks at this time believe Superman was some lame do-gooder. They don't want to read about that guy. They want to read about a big, muscly dude with giant guns and lots of pouches. It was the 90s. So how would the creatives at DC Comics get Superman back in the spotlight? Well, their first idea was to have him get married to Lois Lane. These two had been an iconic couple for decades, and what better way to grab readers' attention than to finally wed these two? So that was the plan, but there was one problem. At the time, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, was in development, and they loved the idea of Clark and Lois getting married. So much so that they told the folks behind the comics that they were not allowed to marry Clark and Lois before the show did. They could do it at the same time as them, or after, but not before. This was bad because the show hadn't even aired yet, and they weren't planning on marrying the two for at least another season. So this completely ruined their plans. They had to scrap everything and start from square one. So what do they do? Well, every single meeting, whenever they would get stuck, Jerry Ordway would say, let's kill him. This was generally said in a more joking way, but this time everyone at that meeting actually agreed with Jerry. And that's how the initial idea of the death of Superman came to be. Because the people in charge of the Superman comics wanted to do something big, but their original plans got ruined by a TV show, so they decided to kill him. Something that was really funny about this is this wasn't mandated by DC. A lot of death of character events you see now are events where the publisher goes, we don't care about this character anymore and a sales bump would be nice, so let's kill him. But the death of Superman came from the writers, artists, and editor that were working on Superman. So DC still had to approve it, which they did. The death of Superman was not the first time a superhero died in the comic books, but it was the first time a hero had fallen with this much spectacle surrounding it. Prior to this, most superhero deaths were ones where a hero would just randomly die in an issue and then come back at the end of the same issue or the following one and there was no fuss around it. Heck, this had even happened to Superman before. But this time was different. DC had made an event out of it. They said Superman, the first comic book superhero, was going to die. This sparked all kinds of discussion amongst comic book fans. A lot of people were skeptical, saying that it was a ploy from DC to sell more comics and that Superman wasn't going to actually die. Other folks believed Superman would perish, but that he was too lucrative a property for DC to keep buried, so they'd just bring him back in the next issue. Either way, DC had sparked enough of fans' curiosity that they had to read for themselves to find out what happened to Superman. To kill Superman, the granddaddy of all superheroes, you can't have him go out like a punk. You can't have some run-of-the-mill villain that another DC hero could take out, kill Superman. No, this needed to be a problem only Superman could solve, and that's where Doomsday came in. When they decided to kill the last son of Krypton, no one knew how they were going to do it or who would strike the fatal blow except for one man, Dan Jurgens. He had the idea for this hulking monstrosity that would end Superman. In his own words, he said, I wanted something that was a force of nature, something that was power incarnate. And he definitely delivered that with Doomsday. The reason the death of Superman works as a story and it still holds up to this day is because of Doomsday. This entire story is centered around the beast that would kill Superman. The story started out strong with an amazing introduction for Doomsday leading up to the death of Superman. And the four issues leading up to the death of Superman story, at the end of each of those issues was a single panel of Doomsday's fist punching a wall. And then you finally see him break out and the first thing he does is admire a little bird for a few seconds before mercilessly killing that bird and laughing. 
This little sequence perfectly lets you know who Doomsday is, a savage that lives for violence. From here, he goes on an absolute rampage through America, just destroying everything in his path while laughing at all the destruction he causes. I love the way this story plays out. Doomsday breaks out and starts his rampage, the Justice League get wind of this and engage him, they just get absolutely manhandled, the writers do a fantastic job at building up Doomsday, at one point Maxima scans Doomsday's mind for his thoughts and proclaims he's hate, death, and bloodlust personified, nothing more. If that doesn't tell you who Doomsday is, I don't know what line will. Each encounter with Doomsday feels more hopeless than the last. Doomsday goes somewhere, causes havoc, and then moves on to the next spot, and in the process swats the Justice League like they were flies. Every Justice League member's internal monologue during these battles essentially boils down to, this monster is impossible to stop, we are all going to die. Booster at one point even says that Doomsday is faster than the Flash, which is horrifying to think about. Doomsday, with one hand tied behind his back, decimates the Justice League without any struggle at all. While this is going on, Superman is in Metropolis doing an interview for high school students where they can ask him questions. There's a bit of meta commentary here, with some students whispering about how lame Superman is, because like I mentioned before, at this time in the 90s, a lot of kids were moving on from Superman to darker, edgier heroes like Punisher, Batman, Wolverine. Superman was seen as a boring, do-gooder boy scout. There's also a moment where Superman sets the tone for the book. A student asks him, what about all that, you know, hitting and violence? Don't you get tired of it? I mean, isn't there a better way to work things out than caving in someone's head? To which Superman replies, Believe me when I say I wish that violence wasn't necessary, but violence is the price we pay to accomplish a greater good. As heroes, we choose to protect that good with our lives. Which, in the context of a story titled The Death of Superman, is a rather chilling line. Also, during this, the, we just see the violence that Doomsday is applying to the Justice League. While Superman is talking about violence, we see the Justice League trying to stop Doomsday, and Doomsday just absolutely destroying them without breaking a sweat. Superman's interview then gets interrupted by a special broadcast where a newscaster reports that Doomsday has been destroying everything in his path, and the Justice League have failed to stop him. After Justice League repeatedly gets their asses handed to them by Doomsday, Superman finally shows up. Superman confronts the creature and stands his ground while Doomsday throws a haymaker but the Man of Steel doesn't even flinch, showing Doomsday that he's much different from the rest of the league. But Doomsday adjusts and kicks Superman in the stomach which sends him flying. Superman says he doesn't know if he's ever been hit that hard. Keep in mind, this is a Superman who has fought Darkseid and many other incredibly powerful villains. During their fight, a family's house gets destroyed and set on fire, and then Doomsday just leaps away. Superman chases after him, and while he does, you can hear a kid crying out for help from the house, and for Superman to come back and help his mom and baby sister. This dilemma is how you write Superman. The Justice League has just been taken out. Doomsday is wreaking all kinds of havoc and leaping to a new area to cause more devastation, so Superman has to figure out how to solve these two problems. He can't let this kid's family die, but he also can't let Doomsday get away because for the five minutes it takes him to go back and save those two people, Doomsday could kill dozens more. Superman realizes that Doomsday can't fly, he just jumps around, so he uses that to his advantage. He grabs Doomsday, puts him at the bottom of a lake where the silt will keep him stuck for a few minutes while Superman goes to save the family. Superman saves the mother and child, and I just love this sequence. Giving Superman a problem to solve while fighting his toughest foe and seeing his thought process on how to figure it all out, genuinely one of my favorite moments from this story. Something else that I liked about this sequence is the teenager who I mentioned that was crying for help for his baby sister and mother who were stuck in the building crying for help for Superman is the same teenager that was earlier talking crap about Superman when he was watching the Superman interview saying that Superman was lame and Gary Gardner was way cooler because this kid was supposed to sort of represent at the time modern comic book fans who preferred the more edgier heroes and didn't like Superman. It was cool to see that like, you know, this kid that doesn't like Superman at the end of the day when you need help it doesn't matter, Superman's the one you call, so I like that little aspect to it that they added. Something that I found really cool about this event is that the creators had an idea for the final four issues of the death of Superman. The idea was as the event of Superman's death grows closer, the number of panels per page in each issue got lesser and lesser, starting with four panels per page, then three, then two, then one, thus making the action get bigger and more intense each issue. I thought that was awesome and really added something to this story. Now let's talk about the final issue. Superman 75, the death of Superman. Doomsday has made his way to Metropolis. He's disposed of the Justice League and given Superman a beating. But this is Superman's home. This is where he draws the line. 
This issue, as Dan Jurgens put it, is a 22 page slugfest, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Splash page after splash page of beautiful action as Superman Doomsday trade blows going all throughout Metropolis. Everything feels hopeless. Superman keeps talking about how defeated he's feeling and how Doomsday hasn't slowed at all. He says his goodbye to Lois and we know this is it. But we don't know how the hell Superman is going to stop Doomsday. Superman gets hurt bad. He's barely conscious and he knows this is his final stand and it's only him that can stop Doomsday now. He has the realization that Doomsday's external bones are just extensions of his skeleton, so he starts snapping them in half, which finally gets a reaction out of Doomsday. The two then exchange final blows, causing huge shockwaves and a massive crater. When the dust settles, Doomsday is dead, finally defeated by Superman. Superman is still barely with us, beaten and bloody. Lois holds him, but Superman only has one thing on his mind. He says, Doomsday, is he, is he, and Lois tells him, you stopped him! You saved us all! And then Superman passes. A Superman has died. What I think this moment displays is that Superman probably should have died when he and Doomsday had exchanged those final blows, but he held on just in case Doomsday had survived. He wasn't going down until Doomsday was stopped, because that's what Superman does. He gets the job done. So why did the death of Superman work where many other death of superhero storylines have failed? Obviously being one of the first of its kind helped, but beyond that, I think Doomsday is what really made things work. Doomsday was a job for Superman. The comic really hammers the point home that no one else could stop him. It had to be the Man of Steel, which makes his sacrifice feel worthwhile. This event felt like there was a lot of passion behind it from the creators and respect for the character. A lot of the behind the scenes information I discussed in this video came from the documentary Superman Doomsday Requiem and Rebirth Lives, which I have linked in the description and I highly recommend you check out. In that interview, you see the creators behind this event and you can tell just how much they all cared about Superman. On top of that, having him stay dead and not appear in a comic for 7 months helped sell it. You had the whole funeral for a friend of it, along with all the imposter Superman showing up. It was an interesting time and made things feel a bit more real. Unlike recently, where the Justice League died or still around in all their solo titles and also came back as the Justice League 4 months later, the death of Superman may have kickstarted the trend of killing superheroes for headlines and higher sales, but the story itself was executed with respect for the character and his stories. For me, the event did its job of telling an engaging story and eliciting emotion out of me as a fan. It didn't feel like a hollow attempt at selling more comics even if that was partially the case. It felt like a grand story where Superman gave his all to stop one final threat that only he could. And that is why I love the death of Superman. Hey, skinny boy, sassy boy, I'll be running to the bank. Yeah, you know I hit the gas in the whip full tank. Riding, riding past the ocean while I'm listening to Frank. 